Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to meet you again in this project. Uh, I will give you in this project some uh, simple trick. Uh, it is really a simple, practical, and important way to follow up acute respiratory failure patient by critical care ultrasound. Uh, how to follow up in daily basis uh, a patient with acute respiratory failure in ICU until you do successful extubation, uh, weaning and extubation. Let us see. Uh, this 70 year old male patient, known case of diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, was admitted to our ICU because of acute pulmonary edema, white lung, and severe hypoxia. He received 80 mg IV Lasix in ER and started a trial of non-invasive CBAP pressure support, BEEP7 pressure support 12, gradually increased to this level, and if you do uh, 60, with BF ratio uh, 180, uh, moderate uh, hypoxia, and BCO2 47, uh, elevated by carb 20, BH 7.3. This uh, blood gases, and the patient was fully conscious, you can start uh, CBAP pressure support in this patient. He has low grade fever, 37.9, and hemodynamically heart rate uh, 100 per minute, sinus, blood pressure 110 over 70, or nor at, nor at 8 mic per minute, uh, heart uh, S1, S2, I hear S1, S2, but my son, Dr. Sharif, hears the S3, uh, chest, bilateral, basal, crackle, abdomen, soft, lax, CBC, hemoglobin 10, platelet 3, uh, 150,000, white cell count increasing, 12,000, chemistry, mild renal impairment, creatinine 1.6, urea 40, otherwise normal. Uh, we started critical care ultrasound for this patient. We started by inferior vena cava. Maximum diameter 1.59, minimum 1.44 centimeter. Uh, the, the inferior vena cava is not dilated because it's less than 2.1 centimeter, but it's not collapsing well. It is all, only 10% collapsibility. In this way, according to the American Society of Echocardiography, uh, CVB, you can consider CVB is 8. One important uh, practical trick here, if you see patient with cardiogenic pulmonary, with white chest, it seems to be cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and the fear of vena cava is not fully dilated and non-collapsing, try to search for another cause, another additive cause for this acute pulmonary edema. Because probably if the heart is the only cause of this pulmonary edema, you expect to see inferior vena cava more than that, okay? This is practical point. If you see inferior vena cava is not fully dilated in patients with cardiac, cardiac pulmonary edema, try to search for another cause like pneumonia, because pneumonia is infection with fever, the patient will be it will not be too much uh, uh, dilated in fear of vena cava because he is losing fluids by fever and by infection. Second, the heart. You see, this is a four chamber view. Uh, as you see here, the septum, inferior septum, is not moving at all in the basal part here with hypokinesia of the apex and the apical part here, a lateral wall hypokinesia. As you see here, left atrium is not markedly dilated, not ballooning, a left ventricle is not markedly dilated. That means there is acute element here in this patient. A visual tapsy, movement of the up, up and down, movement of the right ventricle is okay. Visual tapsy is okay. Let us see another view. This is a long axis parasternal view. This is the anterior septum, hypokinesia, and the inferior lateral wall, hypokinesia. Other view. This is the two-chamber view. This is the inferior wall, almost 
يعني سفير هايبوكينيزيا اور اكينيتيك اند سفير هايبوكينيزيا اور اولموست اكينيتيك اوف ذا انتيرور وول اند ذا انفيرور وول فيري باد وول موشن اب نورماليتي ان ذيس بيشنت شورت اكسس بار سن شورت اكسس فيو از يو سي هير This inferior septum is akinetic almost hypokinesia, hypokinesia all over. Okay, so this patient has severe left ventricular dysfunction, generalized wall motion abnormality. Ischemic fraction visual assessment you are talking about 10 to 15 percent. The color mild mitral regurgitation. It's the same also. If the patient is too much overloaded, you will expect more than that. Because mitral regurgitation is uh, preload dependent. If the patient is overloaded, you will expect to see more regurgitation than this. That means this patient probably has another factor uh, with the uh, cardiogenic factor uh, causing this white chest. Since 1994, in ICU, we are the people in ICU. When systolic dysfunction is clearly present, the central clinical questions concern the presence or absence of elevated feeling pressure because this is my targeted in ICU. Is the patient overloaded to give diuretics or CRRT to remove fluids or the patient is not congested to uh, hold uh, diuretics? It's very important because some people have ejection fraction but compensated. And it has compensated patient despite heart failure and is not congested. I talk a lot about these guidelines, American Society of Echocardiography with European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging Guidelines, uh, 2016 of the Associate Function. It is great guidelines. And if you have the experience and the facility, and you have tissue uh, Doppler in your machine, and you have the experience to do it, you should do it. Because uh, with this flow chart in patients with heart failure, you can accurately diagnose the left ventricular increase left ventricular feeling pressure uh, because as you all of you know now with patient with heart failure to assess the feeling pressure of the left ventricle i will put the pulsed wave doppler in the tip of the mitral valve in patient with heart failure if the e over a it's more than two, equal or more than two. That means it is grade three, the service function. And the most important, there is increased left atrial pressure. And this patient probably need diuretics. Need diuretics, probably need diuretics. If the E over A ratio is less than or equal 0.8 with E velocity less than or equal 50 centimeters per second, this is the normal left atrial pressure with grade 1 dissociative function, and this patient probably will not need diuresis uh, at the moment, okay? If in between you need to do the tissue Doppler to know the E over E prime, the average is more than 14, and the tricuspid valve regurgitation velocity is more than 2.8, or the left atrial volume index more than 34 milli per meter square. If two of these positive, you have increased left atrial pressure. If two negative, you are, uh, it is grade one that's always functions. Okay, this is best to do it if you have the experience and have the facility in your machine. But suppose you don't have tissue uh, doubler in your machine and you don't have the experience to do accurately this maneuver. Suppose you don't have tissue doubler and you don't have the experience to do the accurate measurement for the source function. You can still put the pulsed wave doubler at the tip of the mitral valve in patient in this patient with heart failure, and you will see the result of E over A ratio. It is here 1.9. It's not restrictive. Probably this should do normal better because very simply, any patient with severe systolic dysfunction definitely has the source function. He, this patient has the source function. And the, from the clear EA ratio, it is still not reached the restricted pattern because E over A ratio is less than two, but it's most probably pseudo-normal pattern. Okay, it's grade two. Most probably in this patient, not 100%, but most probably grade two. So in presence of pseudo-normal pseudo -normal pattern, or uh, restricted battery in patient with heart failure, you know the patient is in the overload site. 
So, you will go to the lung, as I told you in this patient, because inferior vena cava is not too much dilated, left atrium is not ballooning. We expect another cause for the white chest, and we found right lower loop consolidation, very clear consolidation of the right lower loop in this patient, and the dirt be line going with infection. So, it is a common scenario. It is right lower loop consolidation in patients with cardiac disease, lead precipitate to acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema and white chest with severe hypoxia. Okay, a case of severe heart failure, pneumonia, which precipitate acute pulmonary edema, patient received a good dose of the frozomite and a good amount of urine, but at the end, he didn't tolerate by BAP and connect to mechanical ventilator. He received a proper antibiotic and kept on watch negative balance. So, in this patient, we diagnose a heart failure, severe heart failure. We diagnose pneumonia, and we know it's pseudo normal pattern. We we give diuretics for this patient, and we give antibiotic, waiting for the result of culture to step down or de-escalate the antibiotic, and we need to follow up on daily basis this patient. You we will follow by clinically, the ABG a ventilator sitting, the sputum uh, amount. You will follow with blood pressure, uh, inotropes dose. You will follow clinically, but from the critical care point, ultrasound, I usually follow daily this patient by this way. This is a consolidation. I keep assessing the consolidation every day. Day two in this patient, this consolidation converted to B line, dense B line. After a couple of days, it became A line. So. I am following the resolution of lung water from grade 3, which is the severe uh, lung water, which is consolidation, go, going to grade 2, and you can see in between grade 1, which is uh, separated B line, uh, not dense, not dense B line, and at the end it's A line. So I am following the infection by this way, and it's very accurate way, and it's very good way, better than X-ray, and it's accessible and without radiation, and really it is amazing. What about the feeling pressure? What about the congestion? What about the uh, cardiac follow-up from the feeling pressure point of view? Very simply, you will put. The pulsed wave doubler at the tip of the mitral valve, and you will assess. This was the first day, E over A ratio 1.9. This is the second day, you see, we, we, the, the E wave decrease in size, and the A wave increase. That means we are losing, we are decreasing the left atrial pressure. So, moving the patient from the, the pseudo normal to the grade 1 the source function until I reach it day 4 to this. Keep, be clear grade one the source function which is the e is less than a and the uh, the e velocity is less than 50 centimeter per second so it's very simple maneuver just balsed wave doubler at the tip of the mitral valve and you will see a decreasing size of the uh, e wave every day with decreasing in lift atrial feeling pressure every way. It's very simple methods and it's accurate and with follow up as you see here it's very clear we reach it here from pseudo normal to grade one that's all function with normal left atrial pressure. Once you reach this grade one the all function in patient with heart failure please take care especially of the inferior vena cava also is decreasing in size like that because seeing this the decreasing size of the inferior vena cava and uh, full collapsibility of the inferior, almost full collapsibility of the inferior vena cava with this grade one that solves function in patient with heart failure. Take care, we don't need over diuresis and leading to decreased perfusion pressure and decreased perfusion of the vital organ, especially kidney. So, once you reach grade one that solves function and Decrease the inferior vena cava to this size to, to markedly in patients with heart failure. You can assess the vital organ, especially the kidney, because the kidney is the first organ to suffer from the hypoperfusion. If you found the resistivity index of the, uh, the renal doubler more than 0.7, that means this patient has decreased perfusion of vital organ, and this perfusion of the vital organ by resistivity index. Uh, started, uh, uh, everyone started to talk about, and there is uh, several lectures in uh, the last uh, 
conference of European society are talking about this importance of the safety index and vital organ uh, Doppler study to assess the micro circulation. So, please, if you reach grade one, especially if the inferior vena cava decreases in size and you check the kidney and there is increase in RI, that means the kidney hypoperfusion appear, please, in this circumstance, uh, this is very great uh, statement I need you to concentrate in. In some circum circum particular circumstances, aggressive treatment of the pulmonary congestion may alter the fine balance between endodiastolic pressure and the endodiastolic volume, which will negatively impact cardiac output, systolic blood pressure, and end organ perfusion, renal and coronary. As a result, some patients may experience worsening of ischemia, life-threatening arrhythmia, or a decline in renal function during hospitalization. Consequently, in addition to decreasing pulmonary congestion, therapeutic strategy should prevent end organ damage and do not increase the risk of ischemia, pulmonary for cardiac arrhythmia, and or permanently alter intrarenal hemodynamics. That means, please take care of overdiuresis. If you reach grade one diastolic dysfunction in patient with heart failure and the inferior vena cava decreased significantly, and RI, the safety index of the renal Doppler more than 0.7, please do leg raising test or many fluid challenge 100 cc profile protein uh, fractions in the human album 5% and look for response because this patient may be fluid responsive now and they may need some fluid to be able to decrease noradrenaline and this is what happened with this case exactly with many uh, bolus, many fluid, many bolus, many fluid bolus, uh, the uh, LVOT from 9.19 increased to 11.68. That means this patient is fluid responsiveness, and we keep giving boluses as long as the LVOT VTI is increasing by 10%, and we be able to stop completely noradrenaline in this patient very safely. So again, please. If you reach grade one diastolic dysfunction with decreasing the size of the inferior vena cava and the increase in receptivity index more than 0.7 in renal Doppler, please do leg raising tests or many fluid challenge. If you see the VTI, if you put the pulse wave Doppler here in the outflow tract, the LVOT outflow tract here, and you increase the LVOT significantly more than 10%, this patient is fluid responsiveness, and you over this patient, please give many fluid challenges until you correct the volume, and this will be able to decrease the noradrenal dose and even stop the uh, inopressor dose. It's very important. You reach grade one and you do leg raising test. Now, grade one, that's all dysfunction and the normal left atrial pressure, resolution of consolidation and the appearance of airline and the patient is fluid responsive so you can win the patient successfully and this is what happened with this patient very successfully despite cardiogenic and uh, infective elements this patient treated and follow up in proper way and at the end we successfully win the patient. Thank you a lot for your appreciated listening. Bye-bye.